So now we're going to address the question of how to efficiently compute the coefficients um, in the Newton form of the interpolating polynomial. So, um, so how to, well, so this is what is going to be called divided differences. Okay, and the problem, if you will, is that given a polynomial Pn of x in Newton form, right, which is a0 plus um, a1 x minus x0 plus a2 x minus x0 x minus x1 all the way up to a n x minus x0 up to x minus x n minus 1, right? How to compute a0 to a n such that p n of x i is f of x i for i equals to 0 to n. Right, so that's the problem. Um, so let's try to address this um, in sort of a, a simple case. Um, so let's apply the uh, interpolation condition. Right, so we apply this uh, interpolation condition to the Newton form. So, um, so let's just use um, <clears throat> let's just use um, the first data point, right? Which is that p n of x zero is f of x zero. Okay, but p n of x zero, it's easy to convince yourself, right? X zero is a factor in all the terms except for the first one. P n of x zero is equal to a zero. Okay. So we know that this condition, the first condition, implies that a0 is pn, uh, is f of x0, sorry. Okay, so let's look at the second condition, that pn of x1 is equal to uh, f of x1. But pn of x1 is equal to a0 plus a1 x1 minus x0. Okay, <clears throat> so from that I can compute what uh, a1 has to be. So a1 is equal to f of x1 minus a0 divided by x1 minus x0. But a0 is f of x0, so this looks like f of x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0. Okay, so this is what is called a divided difference. All right, so it looks a little bit like a derivative, right? It's, a, it's sort of a secant approximation of a derivative, okay? And, um, and let's do one more, it's like, and we'll see that this kind of idea uh, plays out again and again, okay? All right. So, okay, so again, I want f of x2 to be pn of x2. pn of x2 is equal to a0 plus a1 x2 minus x0 plus a2 x2 minus x0 x2 minus x1. Okay. And I can solve for a2. a2 looks like the following. I'm going to write this in a rather suggestive form. Um, so f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 minus f of x1 minus f of x0 divided by x1 minus x0 divided by x2 minus x0. So now hopefully you're starting to see something of a pattern, right? So this here 
is looks like a finite difference approximation of a first derivative, and this looks like a finite difference approximation of a second derivative. This is like a finite difference approximation involving x1 and x2. This is a finite difference approximation of the derivative involving x0 and x1. And so I take the difference and divide it by the difference in the values. Again, that all looks very consistent. And so this is what is called a second divided difference. then this is like a first divided difference. Okay, so um, so you can keep going through this. It's like, and what you'll find is that you get, um, <coughs> you get more and more data, if you will, right? Um, so, all right. So um, you can see if you follow this procedure that um, there is uh, sort of an order to the, Structure, or there's a structure to this. So the idea is the following, that you construct higher order divided differences from lower order ones. So let me s sort of formally define for you this divided difference. So let f be a function defined at, dis uh, at distinct points. Call them x0, x1 to xn. Then the zero of divided difference is just a function evaluation. with respect to xi is, uh, so I'm going to denote it by these square brackets, f is just f at xi, and then the cave order divided difference uh, is defined recursively. with respect to xi all the way up to xi plus k is the following. So f of xi to xi plus k is equal to the lower order divided difference xi plus 1 to xi plus k. So I've dropped the first term in this expression, and then I subtract off something where I drop the last term. Okay, so f of xi to xi plus k minus 1. So this is a cave divided difference. These two are cave minus first divided differences. And I divide it by uh, xi plus k minus xi. Okay, all right. So that's really all there is to it, right? So I first define the zero divided differences, and then I recursively define the higher order divided differences uh, from that. Okay. All right. So if I do that, then um, this gives me a way to systematically construct higher order divided differences. Uh, so if I have x0, x1, x2, and x3, uh, the zero divided difference is just f at x0, f at x1, f at x2, f at x3, okay? And then given this recursive definition, I can combine these two to give me f x0, x1, which is a first divided difference. combine these two to give me f of 
x1, x2, f of x2, x3. I can then look at the second divided differences. This combines to give me f of x0, x1, and x2. This gives me f of x0, sorry, x1, x2, x3. And then I can have a third divided difference, which is f of x0, x1, x2, x3. Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so again, it's like we start with the zero, f the you know this column here, which corresponds to the zero order divided differences, which just involve evaluating the functions at those points, and then I recursively define it's like the rest of the columns in this way. Okay. All right. Um, so. Um, so let me just stop here for now. It's like, and then the next thing we'll do is to um, write down the algorithm for divided differences, and then we'll say how that's connected to the coefficients in the uh, <coughs> sort of the Newton form of the interpolating polynomial. So let me just stop here for now.